Welcome back to the Still Soul Mental Health Awareness Channel. <sighs> How y'all doing? All right, so today I am going to do the remaining three reasons why you and me sometimes downplay our mental health struggle. So let's jump right into it. So continuing from the last video, and if you have not watched that video, please go back to, I don't know where this video is going to fall, if there's going to be one between it or another, but I will link it so you guys can watch that one. And um, yeah, so number four. You mentioned your issue before and the response that you got was less than supportive. In fact, it was probably more along the lines of mocking, minimizing your feelings, invalidating, if you will, and it made you feel a lot worse than when you, you know, had it all locked up inside. And I know this happens to a lot of persons. It seemed to happen to me where you express your emotions, you express the challenges that you're having with your mental health and you are met with phrases such as, it's all in your head, which yes, it's in my head, but that doesn't make it less serious. Or it does making things up or it's not that serious, except it is. I think oftentimes when we don't see the results of somebody's mental health issues being something like over the top, like for example, a psychotic break or um, like some kind of, um, some kind of behavior that's not necessarily what they're usually like or admission into in care inpatient care like unless you know we see that kind of of um result we don't take it seriously and that can be that kind of mindset can be very detrimental because some persons the difference between life and death for them is somebody actually listening and paying attention and so we have to be mindful you know we have to be careful of how we speak to people and how we how we invalidate their mental health issues even if you don't understand it even if you kind of not so sure if they're being serious um for the most part i would say give people the benefit of a doubt because yeah you never know you never know so the fifth thing that I want to say contributes to us downplaying our mental health issues is you don't want to seem incapable. You don't want to seem, you don't want to appear to be unable to function normally in, you know, certain spaces and places. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I was at work and... I was having a difficult time. Granted, nobody would know unless they were like paying attention. But I was having a difficult time. I was really anxious. I was trying to gather my thoughts and I was trying to um yeah, I was feeling a bit overwhelmed and it wasn't like what I was doing at work was anything hard, but at that moment I was just feeling overwhelmed. And a thought passed me because I have difficulty with, well, let me, say, let me not say difficulty. Um, every once in a while, I have bouts of anxiety. I know how to properly manage it because I have gotten therapy and I, over the years, I have become more aware, more self-aware in that regard. And, um... I do, I, I, I know 
how to like I, I do what I know helps me to um, work through my own challenges with anxiety so in the midst of me like you know breathing and like processing my thoughts and even texting my husband and be like hey i feel this way i also had a very fleeting thought like oh my gosh am i on like am i incapable like am i it's just because i can't do my job <laughs> You know, and it's just something that a lot of persons probably feel. You know, I wish my background was a little bit more relaxed because I feel very relaxed right now. But anyway, that's fine. It's just like a lot of persons kind of feel that way where, you know, evidence of or the thought is evidence of you having any kind of challenges means that, generally speaking, you're just incapable of doing whatever it is. So... For example, like you're at work like me, you know, you have a mental breakdown or whatever. The fear is that, oh, this is just a demonstration that I can't do my job or I cannot accomplish or achieve what is expected of me. So therefore, it's either that I'm going to be replaced, I'm going to be removed, I'm going to be ridiculed or I am going to be looked on in disdain or is like or if you're like somebody who is looking to move ahead whether it's in at work and i'm talking about work because that's like the most personal thing but in other things too but with work say you're you're looking to move ahead you're looking to progress um you don't want to show any quote-unquote signs of weakness because then you feel like okay um I'm not as good a candidate as somebody else who probably either does not have the same kind of issues or they're pretty good at hiding it. Um, and it could be like an internal belief, but it could also be something that is confirmed externally. So perhaps, you know, the people that you're around based on the um, mental health issues or the you know difficulties that you have, they kind of categorize you in a way. And so again back to the work thing you're probably in an environment where if you should show evidence of like having a mental breakdown or um ch having challenges with anxiety or being depressed or you know other more serious um mental health issues then they will probably want to keep you at a certain level that Yes, they will keep you employed, but it will not, quote unquote, be to the detriment of the company. So they wouldn't put you in certain positions of like, I'm going to say importance. But I mean, I'd love for you guys to weigh in on that because I was having a conversation the other day, a very, very, very enlightening, very enriching conversation with somebody who has worked in mental health in Jamaica for a while. And she was telling me about someone who was working at this organization and she's very, you know, capable, very brilliant. She's very good with computations and everything. And she had her own um, psychotic break, I think. And essentially the organization kind of shifted her and I'm gonna say demoted her. And this woman is still brilliant, but because of that break, rather than like offering support and the kind of organization it is, should have been able to <laughs> offer that kind of support. However, um, they didn't and she was demoted and, you know, so that kind of thing is something that a lot of persons fear. So that's at work. I've always talking about work alone, but yeah, there are other things like in relationships, you know, you probably have a relationship that, or it could be a case where you, um, I'm going to say you're afraid of losing people based on the challenges that you have. You're afraid that um, if it should come to light that you have a mental health challenge or even a mental health disorder or you're not um, necessarily altogether there in terms of like properly healed from probably trauma or whatever and you're in a relationship with somebody whether it is like a platonic relationship or intimate relationship you're afraid that should the truth come out um the persons will leave you 
and that rejection that fear of rejection can really keep people silent or cause people to not um pay much attention to their challenges because they want to prove to themselves and also to others but mostly to themselves that i can do this i got this i'm capable i'm sorry if i'm not looking directly into the camera it's just such a weird angle and um yeah but anyways so yeah um but let me know let me know what you think about that point um do you believe that you know the fear of seeming incapable is something that a lot of people have difficulty with and therefore cause them to downplay their mental health issues and the last one is pretty much i think it's a compilation of everything it like ties it all together um you're afraid of what the reality means you are afraid of accepting. You're afraid of not accepting the reality that, okay, I'm struggling with my brain. My brain, my mind isn't functioning the way that it should. You are afraid of what that will mean for you. You are afraid of what that will mean for your life. You are, you are afraid of what that will mean for your future, for all your opportunities, for all your prospects. Yeah. You guys like my little mic? I'm just testing it out. To see how well it works i don't want to keep it on my shirt because i feel like it's gonna have that static thing but anyways <laughs> um you're afraid and it's something again that i have experienced too where i um because of my upbringing and because of like how like the people I've, I, I I was raised around, and I'm not just talking about parents either, but people I was raised around and the beliefs and everything, I just kind of had this thought that struggling with mental health issues is like something detrimental. So detrimental that it's best I don't accept it as reality because then that will mean, that will probably spell doom for me. When in truth and in fact, accepting the reality of what you're dealing with is probably, for many people, the most healing thing, like a first step towards healing. So you finally recognize, or you finally acknowledge that something is wrong with me. Usually, the next best, the next step is to seek help. And in seeking help, you realize that, oh, I don't have to struggle with this thing. I can actually be treated for it. I can actually, you know, go to talk therapy. I can um, be medicated if, so, if, if needed. I can have a team of doctors and other mental health service providers who will help me, who will walk with me through this thing and help me to better understand and you know better process and deal with all that this issue comes with um and you know the fear of accepting the reality of having a mental health issue it all boils back down to stigma it's just stigma and the the heaviness of that stigma and the fear of what being in i'm gonna say that marginalized group means is so heavy that many of us would rather just not deal with it and can i tell you how unfair that is to yourself that you're struggling quietly you're trying to function normally but deep down inside you're really really like not okay and Yes, in Jamaica, mental health care can be really expensive, but there are some service providers who are affordable. There are some services provided by the government that, while it's not perfect, it can be a start, you know? Or if it's something like you're struggling with anxiety or bouts of depression, there are communities um, that, you know, you can reach out to someone and they can talk to you. I mean, there's this organization, there's this group called Think Mental Health JA, and they do support groups every once in a while. 
And, you know, even to get into something like that, just for the sake of knowing that, okay, I'm not alone, there is help out there, there's information out there, all that good stuff. So I encourage you to not downplay your mental health struggles. It can be very easy to do that, especially with the kind of, you know, environment we're living in and the heavy stigma, but do not, do not rob yourself of being well. Do not rob yourself of getting proper care. Do not rob yourself of working through these issues and having an improved quality of life. So this is the end of my video. Um, I don't know if I'm going to publish this one. I don't know if I'm going to record it again. I hope I don't have to because I feel like this was good. <laughs> but yeah. If you have any other um, fasting money by your eyes, if you have any other um, reason why we tend to downplay our mental health issues, leave it in the comment below. I would love to hear. I actually wanted to have like a bonus one, but I didn't get to properly think about it. So you give me a bonus one or two or ten. And let's just talk about it in the comments below. I look forward to seeing and, you know, having a discussion with you guys. So until the next video, which I'm going to record after this. Bye. Remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let's continue to build this community and stay tuned for more mental health content.